You know, when the Filson Rail Splitter jeans came out, I got tons of requests to review them. But what happened was, every time I would go to the Filson site, add them to my cart, I just couldn't quite click the Buy It Now button. It just... I couldn't justify it. The price was really, really high for something that wasn't salvage and didn't really have any very unique features other than they were Filson. I kept on doing this. I'll bet you half a dozen times I went there, selected my size, put it in my cart, and just chickened out at the last minute. I mean, $165 for the regular denim, $225 for the Selvedge version, and at the time that I actually ended up buying these and got over my apprehension, the Selvedge was all sold out, so obviously they're doing something right. I got over my hang-ups, I ended up buying a dark wash version of the Rail Splitter jeans. And the results were interesting, you know? I gotta say, Filson does it right when it comes to packaging. They always have. Instead of, if these were a 50 or $75 pair of jeans, I would have expected them to arrive in a poly bag, you know, with accompanying receipts or whatever, but being Filson, they came in a nice box with heavy cardstock literature attached to them. They really did it right. And at this price, that's what you expect. So, you know, Filson knows what they're doing when it comes to presentation. Oftentimes, Really, just the, the packaging means almost nothing to me because I'm going to throw it out anyway. But at this price point with a premium product, you want to know that you're getting something for your money. Now, the jeans themselves are available in a few colors, including black, indigo, medium indigo, and a selvage when it is in stock. The sizing's a bit funky, though, in that the length is somewhat fixed. 28 to 33 of a waist size, are a 33 inch inseam, while 34 to 40 waist size are a 34 inch inseam. So if you're a taller guy, these might not even be an option for you. The first thing I noticed about my pair was the light pre-distressing that Filson did with the rail splitter jeans. They come with whiskers and honeycombs and even a little bit of roping at the hem. It almost looks like they're pre-worn to an extent, but there's a problem. And I don't mean merely the denim head idea that you should earn your own fades, but since the jeans are only available in predetermined lengths, Filson just kind of aimed for the middle of the leg for the honeycombs. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, honeycombs are what's typically found on the backside of your knee after normal wear. But what if you have to hem the pants? Taking a few inches off the bottom means that these fades now look out of place, positioned right on top of your calf. It's a big mistake in my opinion. It doesn't appear that the other models suffer from the same issue, though, only looking at the website, so it doesn't look like they have the same sort of pre-faded, pre-distressed look. So if you're going to choose another color, this might not be a problem at all. The denim itself is 14 and a half ounces, made in Vietnam, and then shipped over here to the USA where it's sewn into a final product. Now, of course, I would have much rather seen denim from Vidalia Mills or Mount Vernon, but I suppose that would also mean a more expensive product. And we're already looking at 165 non salvage jeans here, so I understand what they did. There's actually a pretty interesting article in Forbes about the denim mill that Filson is using. But for most consumers, the end product is what they care about the most and not the efficiency of a denim mill. I'm happy to say, though, that the denim is very nice with a good amount of character for a mainstream brand. And just for reference, the black rail splitter jeans are actually 13 ounce Italian denim, and the selvage is 13 and a half ounce Japanese denim. Probably the most striking thing about the rail splitter jeans though, is in the pockets. These are straight out of work pants with double layered bottoms that are by far the most robust of any pockets I've ever tried in denim. They even feel stiffer than the 10 ounce duck canvas pocket bags on my pair of Okayama denim. Of course, heavy duty, rarely means comfortable, and you definitely know that these pocket bags are there. When you're wearing the jeans, it's hard to forget that there are, at times, five layers of fabric against your thigh, which is simply too much for anyone who doesn't need that kind of durability. The rest is pretty standard fare. Five pocket design, wide belt loops, zipper fly, and a metal shank button with a Filson leather patch on the back. There isn't really much here that changes the norm or tries to be different. I think that Filson just wanted to create their own version of the classic all-American jean. Keeping true to the classic architecture, the rail splitter jeans are straight leg, with a slightly higher rise than usual. They aren't in high rise cowboy territory necessarily, but probably best described as a medium high rise. The straight leg means that they play nicely with chunky work boots, even the likes of whites and nicks, which are really heavyweights in that category. Overall, these definitely remind me of most workwear denim I've worn through the years, and I'll bet they'll work perfectly well in that segment. Of course, 
Few people will spend $165 on jeans that they're gonna wear to work, but more on that later. Now, the value of the rail splitter jeans is where things get a little bit tricky. After all, I think it's most important to look at the end user that was in mind for the creation of a product. You know, after all, you wouldn't go shopping for compact cars if your ultimate need was towing capacity. And Filson, although they did begin as an Alaskan outfitter, outfitting frontiersmen and loggers and stuff like that, they've been bought and sold since then. And it's really obfuscated exactly who their clientele is. They created the CCF workwear line just to sort of make workwear. And these, these jeans, the rail splitters, aren't in that category. So it begs the question, who are the rail splitter jeans actually for? You know, Filson really sits at an interesting spot. They're not quite like a tech outdoor company the way Arcteryx or Patagonia are, and they're not really a workwear company like Duluth Trading Company, Carhartt, or Dickies. They're somewhere in between, and I think that who their, their core base customer is are people who like the look of rugged, heritage, outdoorsy kind of wear, but no, don't necessarily work with their hands or don't necessarily put it to work. Now, of course, there are people out there who have worked in their Filson gear. I've done it myself, so it's understandable, but most people wouldn't pay $150 plus for a pair of work pants when you can get three of similar, you know, build quality for the same price. So you gotta look at who their clientele is. It's sort of the Range Rover mentality. You know, these Range Rovers, they can go off-road, but they also offer the luxury and the refinement of a nice on-the-road ride. So that's not there's nothing wrong with that. I want to make sure that I make that very clear. There should be no gatekeeping when it comes to clothing. Just because you don't work with your hands doesn't mean that you can't enjoy this stuff. If you earn the money, you should be able to spend it wherever you want. So it, I'm just trying to figure out exactly who these jeans are for. The Filson Rail Splitter jeans are really for the person who's a fan of Filson in the first place. So let's say you have a Mackinac Cruiser and maybe you have one of their bags or several of their other products and you really like that sort of overbuilt, heavy duty, ruggedly handsome look. I mean, who could blame you? Then these are a great option for you. I mean, they're a classic blue jean built very well. But of course, at this price point, it does make sense to look at some competitive options. For $125, or $99 if you buy two of them, there are the Origin Main Factory Jeans. I've been wearing a pair of these for the last year or so, and they're excellent. All made in the United States, all American-made cotton, a very American company. A very grounds up, very grassroots company, as a matter of fact. And if that's what you're after, a true American kind of thing, then Origin is a great place to start. At $118, the Brave Star True Straight 21 and a half ounce jeans are another entirely American option. Now, of course, I would have mentioned the 14 ounce version to, you know, similarly compare to Filson, but they appear to be sold out at this time, which is unfortunate because I've actually been wearing a similar model to those for years now, and they're among my favorites. I'm wearing them right now, as a matter of fact. For $99, you can get the Teleson stock straight leg jeans using 14 ounce American Cone Mills non selvage denim. These are sewn in San Francisco and are very much comparable to the rail splitters for much less. For somewhere between 30 to 35 bucks, you have the Carhartt traditional fit straight leg jean. Now these are 15 ounce denim, and of course being that price, you know they're imported. But I wanted to include this option because this is more typical of something that somebody would buy to work in. You know, if you're gonna buy something like this, you're not too afraid to thrash on it. And I mean, hey, it's 15 ounce denim, these things are gonna last a long time, so it's just another option to include. So the Filson Rail Splitter jeans are a good jean, there's no doubt about that. And if you like the Filson brand and you pick these up, I have no doubt that you'll be satisfied. But if you're somebody who's looking for workwear, there are better options out there, more suited to what you're gonna put them through. If you're somebody who's looking for a great all-American, American-made jean, well, there are better options out there for much less. But for those who know what to expect, understand the shortcomings, then I have no doubt that you'd be satisfied with these if you, in fact, fit their sizing, don't have to have them hemmed, uh, appreciate the build quality, and are willing to pay the price. They're not a bad option. But if you know, you're really looking for something uh, to work in, I would look elsewhere, just to be honest with you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Do you have a pair of these? Did you get a pair of the Selvage ones? Were you the one who bought the last 34? I wanted those. <laughs> well, anyway, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.